So this is the final vlog, uh, vlog three, which is going to be discussing the coaching process. So we're going to be looking at a coaching session that I have done and evaluating it, looking at a coaching behaviour that I would like to improve on and then an event or a situation uh, where I think I could have improved on as well. The athletes that I will be doing my coaching um, video on are two elite youth athlete hockey players. They play for Cranley School first team and also for East Grinstead Hockey Club. They've had about two years SNC experience, um, so yeah. So just an outline of the session uh, that I did with the athletes. So firstly took them through a warm up. It was an agility session, so it was a warm up based uh, to get them ready for an agility session. Um, so the agility session included side shuffle, um, side shuffle into cross step. So we did side shuffle first, which was predetermined, um, followed by a undetermined side shuffle. So reacting to each other, um, followed by a side shuffle to cross step, which was then followed up by reactive shuffle to cross step, uh, matching each other. Before I talk about the coaching behaviours that I need to improve on and an event that I could alter differently that would be more suitable, I just wanted to actually do a review of the positives throughout this coaching session. The first one is that I thought the coaching session was well structured uh, with a development of difficulty throughout. So starting off uh, with just um, giving the athletes the movement pattern and then from there increasing the speed of the movement pattern. Um, and then making it reactive and then even more reactive so they are uh, defending and attacking against each other. And then from then developing it from a side shuffle into a side shuffle cross step. Uh, I also related it to the athletes in terms of how they'd use it within their sport which I think is good in coaching so they can relate it back to when they are playing. I used a good use of visual demonstration um, so show them the movements, show them the good positions that they need to be in and also finally I use external feedback to praise the students and also give them correction if need, so, need to. Um, so on one of the cases one of the girls needs to bring her chest up more upright so I told her at the end of the um, end of the drill and then followed up she did it again. So. Yeah, they're the positives throughout the session. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the coaching behaviour that I would like to improve on. But first thing I'm just going to talk about, so here when I'm just showing them the side shuffle for the first time throughout the session, I just wanted to point out that here I had good visual demonstrations. So I perform the movement and then the um, athletes copy what I do. But this actually leads on into the coaching behaviour that I wanted to improve. So I find that throughout watching the video of me coaching that I didn't notice that I did and it's actually something that I have a coaching philosophy, um, which is part of my coaching philosophy, is not to talk while demonstrating. So demonstrate the action and then talk about it or talk about it first and then demonstrate it. So as you can see in this second clip here, I am, and you can hear it as well, so I'll let you listen. Yes, yeah, so I talk about the action while I am doing it, whereas that can be um, unheard, like misheard by the athletes, and it also can get lost in translation. So it's better to um, explain what you're going to do, show them how to do it, and then ask them if they have any questions about the situation, rather than doing it all at once. The coaching event that occurred in this coaching session that I would like to have handled differently was um, talking about the athlete on the left hand side, so the taller girl. When we were doing the uh, just simple side shuffles to begin with, I noticed that she was um, far too upright. And at the end of the drill, I told her that she was too upright and I showed her the position that she needed to get in. Um, and 
asked her to perform them again in this lower position, which she did. She did that fine. And then the next drill, she continued to do it at the lower level, which was still a predetermined drill. Then when I started to call, um, when I started to add reactive drills in, so whether it was reacting to a clap or reacting to her partner when she was defending or attacking, she loses that um, lower centre of mass position and becomes more upright again. So in this case, I thought, well, she didn't respond well to just a visual demonstration and instead could have used some cues to um, or some constraints, constraints-led approach to help her improve her lower um, lower centre of mass. So these next videos here, you can see that I am telling the athlete during the side shuffle that she needs to keep her centre of mass lower. Um, and in fact, there I just told her I didn't actually demonstrate. So maybe a visual demonstration there would have helped her um, throughout the session. But she seems to get it uh, when performing just a simple side shuffle. And then we can see here that she's performing a side shuffle again and she's still keeping that low position, which is good. Um, which is what I wanted her to do. But then as you can see here when we go to a reactive drill she uh, becomes a lot more upright. I'm actually aware that, that this athlete um, has struggled to get into a, well, with a lower centre of mass throughout agility drills before in the past and it's probably an attractive state for her that she can't get out of, that she has to set to upright position. So ideally I'd like to spend more time with this athlete to help um, her get out of that attractive state and be able to uh, lower her centre mass throughout the movements, um, which is what I think she needs. Ideally through a constraints led approach or through um, just going over the movement again and again and again. One last thing that I wanted to talk about through, um, with my coaching behaviour through an agility session is the structure of a, the agility session. So as I've previously mentioned, it was structured throughout. So they started um, just at a, a movement predetermined, and then from that developed into reactive partner march where they were reacting to their partner's movements, doing the side shuffle, and then from there going from the side shuffle to the cross step with the same progressive um, layout which is what um, is described as blocked agility. So um, it's, a, it's a way to structure your agility sessions. And But I want to, wanted to talk about is that I always do my agility sessions in this blocked manner. However, there's obviously different ways to do it. So the random way of doing an agility session, so you do um, a shuffle to predetermine and then you do um, a shuffle crossover step then you go to reactive shuffle and then back to reactive um, shuffle to crossover step so it's mixing your session up um, which has been shown to um, cause contextual interference uh, which is the degree of the functional interference found in a practice situation where the several tasks are sort of learned and practiced together and it actually has had great effects on um, transfer and retention with the agility drill into the sporting environment. Um, so where I've always used blocked agility, it might be more beneficial for the athletes um, for me to use random coaching, agi uh, random agility coaching rather than